if you could think of it like layers coming off of you when you think of your anger. So anger is like a layers of, of a protection, if you like, coming off of the raw emotion. So if you could think of your raw emotion like a little core of raw emotion inside of you, and then what's happened is generally we've covered that core of emotion just like layers of an onion ring. We've covered that core emotion with layers of protection. The reason why we do that is because we're actually very afraid about experiencing fully the pain of that core emotion. So what we do, instead of just allowing the experience of the pain of the core emotion, which actually releases it, what we do instead is we place layers or blockages around that core emotion to protect ourselves from that emotion. And the layers can get so dense and complex that in the end we're not even conscious that that core emotion exists anymore within us. However, the reality is from God's perspective that that core emotion does exist within us. And the reality also is from God's perspective that unless we release that core emotion, we won't get closer to God. Now, the more layers there are around this core emotion, the more difficult it becomes to access the core emotion. So you can see how layers around the core emotion are a product of time as well. And they're also a product of how much abuse or difficulties we've had during our life. So if we've had a relatively smoother life or we're younger, then obviously we're going to find it a little bit easier to access the core emotion and get rid of the layers than if we've had a longer life or we've had a, a more of a, a life where we've been abuse, abused in our life. So obviously then the layers are usually greater. And it's the removal of these layers that get us down into that core emotion. So you can say these layers are our suppressions. That's where we suppress the actual core emotion. Now, a lot of times, those layers began to be constructed way before you had a conscious recollection of constructing them. Your parents constructed them for you, in many cases. So, for instance, let's say there was a core emotion inside of your parent. This is their core emotion now that they are denying. And they denied the core emotion. Those of you who came to the parenting group knew, know that every single core emotion that the parent denies the experience of, the child automatically experiences it, the child itself automatically experiences it as a reflection of what the parent is denying. Now, so at that point, the child's not getting damaged so much because the child is actually experiencing the emotion, but the emotion is allowed to pass through them. Right? But where the damage enters the child is when the parent suppresses the emotion passing through the child as well, which the parent, by the way, is highly likely to do because it's suppressing its own core emotion. So whenever it sees that emotion displayed in the child, it's going to also suppress the core emotion in the child. So what happens is, it's not so much the core emotion now that's into the child, but it's the, the action of suppression that the parent has taken against the child receipt or feeling the core emotion. Now, I'll give you an example of that. Let's say the child's just crying. So a two-year-old child or even a one-year-old child just crying, crying, mm -hmm. crying, right? Um, let's say the child's two. So it's a child that's, that's now, you know, walking and uh, maybe talking a little, and, and the, but the child is just crying all the time. Now, the parent will highly likely at this point take a number of different actions. Because remember, the child crying is actually what the parent needs to do. Right? The parent needs to cry, but isn't crying. And that's why the child is crying, in the majority of cases. Now, I'm not saying, not if they've hurt themselves or something like that, although even the child hurting himself is a parent's law of attraction. But the child actually just crying for no seeming reason, then it's the parent denying the emotion within the parent. So the parent denies this grief and sadness in itself. The child fears the, feels that grief and sadness and then expresses that grief and sadness. It may take one of two options. It may go to the parent and hug the parent, right, in order to, because the child feels that the parent needs that kind of love from the child, or it may actually express the grief itself. It just depends on the personality of the child as to what it does. Now, if it, goes and hugs the parent, what does the parent generally do? That the parent feels rewarding of that hug, doesn't it? So the parent now establishes 
an emotion on top of that grief that every time the child is crying, the child doesn't have to feel that grief, you're going to get a hug from me. Right? And that is actually suppressing the parent's own emotion. Can you see how it works? There's this interaction going on. Now, now the child itself now has been taught a thing, and that is that as soon as it cries, it needs to be hugged. That's what the child's been taught. The child's also been taught that as soon as it cries, like the parent will respond with love to the child. Right? So that's what the child gets taught. Now, I use the word love, by the way, in quotation marks, because it may not be loving at all. What would be the motive of the parent hugging the child? To stop the child from crying, which is not a loving action. Like stopping anybody from doing anything is not a loving action. So, so a lot of times it's driven by another emotion. But, but the child then interprets that as love. So in that one instance, the child has learnt, two years of age, has learnt that love means if you cry, you get hugged. So now let's translate that child up to an adult. She's a woman in her 20, 25, she's married, she's got uh, her husband's around 20, you know, a bit older than her maybe, 26, 27, 30 or whatever. And whenever she cries, her husband gets angry with her. What's she going to feel? She's not being loved, is she? And so she's going to want a man who whenever she cries, he hugs her. That's what she's going to want. And she'll interpret that as love. Now, it may take her many years after that to work out actually that just because the man is hugging me, it doesn't mean he's loving me. Right? But that's a belief that's in her that came from two years of age. And she'll have so many layers, layers and layers around those beliefs. Does that make sense? So allow yourself to see as an adult that these layers around the core emotions will be many and varied and we've got to deconstruct these layers in order to get at the core emotion. Now, one of the biggest outermost layers, if you like, around this emotion is the layer of anger. Because what does layer, this layer do for us? This layer gives us a seeming sense of control, a seeming sense of um, uh, protection, and, and a seeming sense of defence against feeling or experiencing the core emotion. That's what's actually happening inside of ourselves. So anger in this case can often be used as a defence towards feeling the, all, of these layer, all of these different layers of emotions. That anger could also be used as an expectation of others to protect the emotion. So whenever for instance, in the, in the example I gave of the lady who's now married, whenever she cries and her husband isn't hugging her, she gets angry with him. So why is she getting angry with him? Because he's not helping her suppress the core emotion. Right? Right? He's not helping her do that. So the core emotion is maybe that I'm unloved or I'm unwanted or I've been rejected or whatever the core emotion is, but because if you, so if you're crying and you're getting angry with someone at the same time, then you are not dealing with core emotion. So you can, you can do that for years, cry and be angry with someone and not deal with the core emotion. Even things like suicide are, emo are actions taken with anger in most cases. Where you've become so angry with everyone around you and what they've created inside of you, and you don't want to allow yourself to actually feel your own emotion. So people in suicidal states are often very, very angry people. And in fact, there are many spirits who have passed in suicidal states, and the reasons why they pass into some of the lower parts of the spirit world mm -hmm. is because they are so angry with everyone and they've blamed everyone for their life. Now, oftentimes this blame has some substance in the sense that many times in your own life you have been hurt or abused by someone else, right? But remember we said yesterday that there is no such thing as justifiable anger. Now justifiable anger, all you're doing is justifying yourself not experiencing that causal emotion. Does 